Welcome to the shop everyone. Today we're going to be file fitting the piston rings to each cylinder bore on this big block 454 Chevy. And also just letting everybody know up front, this is just how I go about gapping rings. Uh, it's always best practice to read the ring manufacturer's instructions and also the ring gapping tool you might be using, how they would suggest you use it. Uh, over time I learned to use it a different way that helps me get the gap good and square and so it works for me but it might not work for other people. So there are some of the tools we'll be using to gap the ring gap and there we have the gap inserted into the bore and the two red arrows are showing the gap there's none. So we need to look at the manufacturer's information and see if we can't come up with uh, a ring gap that we'd like for this engine. So you got street moderate turbo nitrous and it's bore times 0 .005 for the top ring and then bore times 0 0.055 for the second ring and we got blown racing only and that's a 006 on the first and second ring. And we've got circle track and drag racing. It's 0055 and 0057. And the oil ring seems to stay at the 15,000 for all different applications. So let's get the bore size. So it looks like we got a 4 inch 280 bore and I don't know the, the, the blown only I don't really want to go quite that big but pretty close. Let's see I know I want to go bigger than the street moderate turbo nitrous so the bore times 0056 gives me 24 thousandths top ring and then the bore times 0058 gives me the second ring gap size. So the top ring will be 24 thousandths, the second ring 25 plus 15 for the oil and that's the gap we're gonna go with. Here's my ring filer that I use. Just clap, in it, clamp it in the vise there. So now I'm gonna take a number one ring, stick it in the bore and I have an old flat top piston I'm using to push down the bore, make it good and square. Then on the feeler gauges, I got like a 20, a 22, and a 24. So what I'll do is I'll file it on my ring filer until I get my 20 to go in. Then I know to be a little bit more careful. And then I'll keep cutting off a little bit more, a little bit more until I get my 24 thousandths snug fit for the top ring. And it'll take a couple times. Uh, a as you do the engine, you get a kind of a feel of how much to take off the ring so it speeds up a little bit once you kind of get used to a couple cylinders. But the first couple ones are always a little bit cautious, take a little bit more time. So there I got a good fit with a 24. And now I'm gonna deburr the ring a little bit. I have like a points file. And I'll take off the rough edges from the filing and I actually have a better way to do it I have like a small grinder or a grinder that has like a scotch wheel on it and that's what I'll usually end up using and then use a small file just to get the inside so let's get another ring let's insert it in the cylinder it looks like I'm on maybe what's that, number five so at this point you're just doing the same thing and repeating the same process until you get the gap where you want it. Now the reason we do the individual bores is because the finish of the bore can vary a slight amount. So when you gap a ring to a certain bore, it's gapped exactly for that bore. And the way I was shown to like keep up with it nicely was just after you get done gapping them, you just leave them in the bore. 
so once I get all the rings gapped, I'm going to leave them in uh, individual cylinders that they're gapped for. And when I assemble the rods and pistons, so if I got number one rod and piston, I'll go to number one bore, pull out the rings, and I install them on that piston. So just a good way to keep up with them after they're gapped is just leave them where they're at. So it looks like we're on the last cylinder there as far as the top ring goes. You can see no gap whatsoever. So we're going to get that one to size and then we're going to start on the number two rings. Which the gap is a little bit larger than you would think. You know it wouldn't be because the gap, the whole gap thing is the more power you make, the more heat you put in the engine, the more things expand. So uh, the gapping is to make the ring ends not butt together, butt together under a high horsepower application. And uh, you would think that the top ring would be larger than the second ring, but this is just what I heard. I'm just a guy in the garage doing this as a hobby. But uh, my understanding is that they keep the second ring a little bit larger to keep ring flutter down. That if you get pressure in between the two rings, it can actually lift the top ring to break the seal to get like a ring flutter as I understand it. And so that's why the second ring, to my understanding, is gapped a little larger. So here's that scotch wheel I was talking about, and that's how I go about deburring them. And I still take the file and hit the inside a little bit. So that's our final top ring we're finishing up. And uh, stick it in that last bore. And there we have a, showing you number one rings all gapped, all in the correct bore. Everything went nice. So starting on number two. And I'm gonna speed that up real fast and get it through. It's basically the same thing that the uh, top rings were. But these here will be gapped at the 25 thousandths instead of the 24 thousandths. So the piston rings came with a Wiseco piston set that I had bought for the engine. Uh, the piston rings are advertised as j &E, which is a pretty good brand name, I think. Uh, seemed to have like a Molly inlay with a cast iron second. Uh, and also with the ring filer that I have, you'll see that I turn it into the ring. And that's so that sharp edge won't protrude out, even though I file, file it down when I'm done. But also, I, I wonder sometimes if that inlay, if you turned it the other way, could actually be pulled out of that top ring slot. So I always turn it like counterclockwise into the rings when I uh, file fit them. So here we are getting down to the last rings. I'm going to have to file fit. At least of the second rings. Everything seems to be going really good. Really happy with how they're turning out. Alright, last one. Get it with that little scotch wheel. So we got one, two done. Got the oil rings, and all they really have to do is be plus. 15,000 so I stuck them in the bore and all of them were above that number so I didn't have to do anything to the oil rings so that pretty much is the job done as far as gapping the rings there's the ring gapper that I used a filer I did buy a new diamond wheel for it and it worked out really nice uh, worked out really good so so if you enjoyed the video Hit me with a like, share it with your friends, subscribe, and I hope to see you on the next project. Hey, thanks so much.